What's up everybody, it's Parker with BI Elite. In this video, we're gonna cover part three of the Power BI Admin View series. If you're just tuning in, I highly recommend checking out parts one and two, especially part two, where we cover how to get a refreshable access token. The goal of this entire series is to create this Power BI Admin View report that is refreshable anywhere. We're just calling API, so you're not tied to any local files, you don't need a gateway or anything like that. Everything is handled within Power Query, so you don't need to rely on Python or PowerShell or any other programming languages in order to get the data. So let's carry on with part three, where we're gonna cover how to get all of your user activity. This is going to give you a detailed log of all of the different actions that all of the users of your tenant are doing within Power BI service. We're again going to be calling the Power BI API, and this specific API call is actually pretty difficult. I'm gonna go ahead and open up my function get activity in the advanced editor to show you what this code looks like. You're gonna see it's pretty intense here. We have a lot of parameters up top and we have some conditional statements thrown in here as well. And to top it off at the very end, you can see we are calling this same function recursively. I do recommend checking out the video I posted a few weeks back on how to perform recursive calculations in Power Query. The link to that will be in the description as well. But let's go ahead and dive into this API call and making this work properly. I'm gonna go ahead and pull up the Activity API documentation. Here we are in the API Explorer. If you recall, this is a really great offering by Microsoft that allows you to make these API calls directly from the web. So it takes your credentials and passes it through to the API as if you had authenticated within Power Query like we were doing manually. But here is this Get Activity Events call, and this will walk you through everything you need to know. Basically, we are calling this API endpoint uh, it's my org admin activity events, but we also need to apply some parameters. We need a start date time and an end date time. We can set this to be any period of time that we want. So for example, between August 18th, zero hours, through August 18th, let's do the first four hours of the day. We can go ahead and click this run button and it's going to give us a response. And we see we actually don't have any data here. I'm actually going to expand this out a little bit. Let's do the first 23 hours of the day and click run and we'll see what we get back. So we get a response success code of 200. And here's our body here. We actually don't have any data here as well. And this is kind of the stipulation that makes this API call so difficult. We see this return called continuation token and it's a long string. So this API is a little bit weird. You basically call the API to get all the activity back for a certain period of time. And it may or may not give you any data back. And it might actually give you a continuation token. And basically you need to pass this token back into the API call and keep calling it to get more data back. And by the end of it, it won't give you a continuation token, it'll be the end, and that's how you know you've gotten all your data. So just because I don't have any activity event entities in uh, these two brackets here, it doesn't mean I don't have any activity. It means I need to keep calling that API with this continuation token until I get all of my data back. And this is why we need to set up that recursive call within our function. Before we go over to the code, I just wanna bring up this one web page I found, this blog post from Microsoft talking about this continuation token. Uh, in this paragraph here, you can actually see them saying, don't let the absence of activity events distract you, just keep calling back with that continuation token. Basically, you may or may not get data back, just keep calling until that continuation token is null, and that's how you know you've got all your data. So with that, let's go ahead and dive into our code here. Firstly, I'm gonna walk you through the function to get the activity, and then I'm gonna walk you through the activity query where we're gonna call this function over multiple days. So from the top, we have several parameters here. We have an access token that we'll need to pass into our API call. We have a start date as a text, and I put this as optional because you only need to pass in the start and end date on the first call. So you pass in the start date and end date, you get back a continuation token, and then you no longer need to pass through that start and end date. You just need to pass through the continuation token because the Power BI API knows what you previously called for the start and end date. So optional start date as text, optional end date as text, optional continuation token as text, and then those are basically everything you need in order to call that API successfully. But then two more parameters here, 
optional loop as number. The only reason I'm doing this is because I wanna take note of how many times I've looped through this function. And I've actually set up a clause to say, if I've gone through this looping over 100 times, I just wanna quit it right there because I might be stuck in an infinite loop. That's just for me, just to feel good that I'm not gonna call this over and over and over and over. And then finally, optional data as a list. This is basically the list of activity events that we are constantly getting back from the Power BI API and adding to. So we need to have a record of all of the entries we've gotten back from that API call because we need to pass it into our function again recursively and just keep adding on to it. So once you have all of those uh, parameters, we can use a hash rocket and then get on to the meat of this function. And before I get too far into it, I want to let you know that the code for this function and the query will be over on the accompanying blog post. The link is down in the description of this video. So once we have the parameters, we can type let, and then we can set up a source step. Source can be equal to json.document web.contents. This is a normal web call. The base of our string is https colon backslash backslash api.powerbi.com slash v1.0 slash my org. If you recall from the previous videos, that is the base setup for all of our API calls. And then in our uh, web.contents parameters in these brackets, we have a relative path. But specifically, this relative path is conditional. Basically, you can think this through, and this may be a little bit confusing the first try through, but just keep thinking about it. If your loop is zero, and let's just assume that the first API call we're gonna pass through this optional loop is a zero. So if it's our first call, then we want the end of our URL to be admin slash activity events start date time equals. And then we wanna throw in our start date parameter and append our end date time equals our end date parameter. So our first web call will look like this. This is gonna be the ending of our API call. If we aren't on the first call, meaning we've already called it, we would have already gotten back a continuation token. So our subsequent calls need to have this ending where continuation token equals the continuation token we get from the first call. So that conditional piece is very important to make sure you're actually calling this correctly. And then finally, we have our headers here, authorization equals bearer space, and then we can add our access token, which is our parameter. We're just gonna call our get access token uh, function in order to get that access token. So once we have that access token, our actual API calls will work properly. So with that, we have a successful API call and we're able to call it the first time with the start and end date parameter, and then every time after with that continuation token. After we make the API call, we need to do a lot of other steps in order to make this work properly. The first step is to assign a token variable equal to the continuation token that is returned from the API. Then we'll set up a current data variable that is equal to the activity event entities returned by the API call. And then appended data is a very important step where we are combining our data from our parameter. So if you recall the optional data as list parameter. So in the beginning, in the first call, we're gonna pass through an empty list. But once we call the API, we hope to get some data back. So we'll append our empty list to our data list that's coming through from our API call. And we'll just keep appending them together for every call. So we have our nice appended data step here. And then loop num equals loop plus one. So as we pass in zero the first time, we'll keep adding one to it just to give us an idea of which loop we are currently on. And then this output step is the last one. It's conditional. We say output equals if token is null, meaning if we've called this API so many times that it has stopped giving us back a continuation token and it is null, then we want to do something. I also have a clause here saying, or loop num is greater than 100, just to make sure we're not stuck in that infinite loop. So if token is null or loop num is greater than 100, then return appended data. And remember that appended data is just our complete list of data that has been returned from the API. If the token is not null and we're still below uh, 100 executions, we wanna call this exact same function again using this at sign, which allows us to call the get activity function that we are currently in, it's a recursive call. We wanna call it in a slightly different way. We need to pass in the same access token because that's gonna be reused, but now we don't need to pass in this start and end date. Since we have a continuation token, the start and end date 
uh, parameters aren't actually necessary. We instead have our token that we got from our uh, previous API call, that continuation token. We have our loop num just to help us keep track. And we have appended data, which is just our current list of activity entries. So thinking about this again, since we are passing through our token, we don't need to start an end date. Since loop num, let's say is one at this point, we can look at our relative path. Loop num is not zero, so we're not needing that start and end date. Instead, we're going to this one where we need that continuation token. So this is everything we need at this point. But finally, we need to return in output. That's very important because our last step is output. And if our token is null, then we're just returning that complete list of entries. If our token is not null, we're calling it again. So basically this output step is determining whether we end it or call that function again. So I know that's a lot to take in, but this does make sense as you think about it more and more. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and end this there. Again, that code is in the blog post. But once we have this function, all we need to do is create an activity step. The first steps of this query are just to give me a list of dates. For example, if I look at the second step, I can see I'm just looking at the last four days of data. It's currently uh, 8.19. So I'm looking at 8.15 through 8.18. So everything prior to this is just to give us a list of dates in order to make this call. I'm not gonna walk through these steps, but again, that code is also in the blog post. So once we get to this table here and we rename our columns, we have our table of dates. Then I want to add a couple of columns. These columns are going to add a start date time and end date time in the proper format. So for example, added custom. Uh, I'm gonna open up the code here. We can see that the final output is this nice formatted string that is going to take the date and add on this t 0 z uh, so that's basically putting in the format that the Power BI API needs. And just as a quick note, you can see that in Power BI's API, when they give you an example, this is the format that it is in. So I'm just matching the format that they're showing within their API Explorer. So let's go back here. And just uh, to explain exactly what this is, if we double click on added, co uh, added custom here, we can see the code that I used. I'm just appending some uh, single quotation marks uh, changing our date to date.txt in a specific format, adding that ending, and then adding that uh, single quotation mark as well. You may find a better way to uh, put it in this format, but this works for me. And then the second column that we need to add is the end date. It's basically the exact same thing, except the ending needs to end in 23.59.59.999. And that is the end of the day. That's you know the 23rd hour, 59 minute, 59 second and 999 milliseconds. So that is the largest range of the day that we can possibly ask for. So now that we have our four days with our date parameters, we can go ahead and invoke our custom function, that get activity function. I'll go ahead and click on that and see how that is set up. So double clicking on my invoke custom function step, we can see that I have created this new custom column called get activity and we're calling our get activity function and we're passing through the parameters that we need for our first call. Our access token, which is simply returned via our other function, get access token. So our access token is passed through, our start date column is passed through, so the start date column, our end date column is passed through. Continuation token is null because this is our first call. Our loop num is zero because we haven't run through this recursive function yet. And then finally, this is very important, our optional data as list, this is just an empty list. So we're passing through an empty list into our function call so that we can just add our data to it. So you can see that we have returned a list here. And if we click on it, we can see if our list has any data. Let's see if I have any data in my tenant. 817, I have some records. 818, I have some records as well. So I went through a few steps in order to just expand it. So I'm expanding my get activity, I'm expanding it again. This was simply just by clicking on the uh, little uh, arrows that are going in different directions just to give me all of those fields. So I'm expanding and expanding. And then finally, this is pretty important. I'm also filtering out certain activity types. So let me go ahead and scroll to the right and I will see uh, operation. So this operation right here, we see export activity events. We see all the things that are going on within my tenant. 
I'm actually filtering out export activity events because that's exactly what I'm doing right now. I'm, I'm calling this API in order to get all of the activity and I'm actually logging activity while I'm doing it. So I don't really wanna see that. I don't wanna see any other admin stuff I'm doing like Git groups as admin. I really only care to see people that are viewing reports, downloading reports, editing reports, creating reports. There's a lot of different options here. And just to kind of give you an idea of what we get back, I don't want to show you too much because some of this might be sensitive data, but we can see the user ID uh, of the person and what they're doing. So remembering that operation, we can even see the exact time that they're doing it with this creation time. Quick disclaimer, this is not the fastest process. I'm running this for four days of data and it runs pretty quickly, uh, just a few seconds. But if you wanna expand this out to 30 days, it may take a little while. That's because we need to call the API uh, upwards of 24 times for each day of data. So as you have uh, 30 days times 24, it's over 600 API calls. So it does take a little bit of time. It may be faster if you went a PowerShell or Python route. But I'm gonna go ahead and expand this out to the last 14 days. So I'm just gonna change my code here to do the last 14 days. And we'll see my list uh, from 8.15 through 8.18. And let's go ahead and go to our last step and see how this will return our data for the last 14 days. And after a minute or two, we can see that we have all of our data back, going back to August 5th, 2020. So the last 14 days of data, we have plenty of rows here. We see 199 plus, probably closer to 500 for the last two weeks. With this implementation, I would probably recommend going back 30 days max, uh, just to make sure that it's not taking too long or that it doesn't time out when you publish this to uh, Power BI service. Last couple notes here before we end the video. Let's go back to the API documentation. Uh, you can see here it does say this API allows 200 requests per hour at maximum. And I believe that means that you can call this API for 200 days of data at a time. Because even though you're calling the API multiple times per day because you're getting back a continuation token, I believe that's still one API call, even though you have to recursively call it. So 200 days of data might be the max if you're trying to do this um, in a way that allows you to refresh uh, via the web. Another method would be to get the hard activity logs and save them to a file and request that way, but I wanna make this fully refreshable on the service. And then last thing here, in case you don't need all of these different activities, maybe you're looking for uh, certain activities that users have performed, or you're actually looking for certain users' data, you can do that with these parameters here. We can see that this filter parameter, you can use it alongside activity or user ID in order to get back a specific chunk of data. They have some really great uh, examples here. So we can look at uh, the activity events for a specific activity type. You see that there's this and uh, money filter equals activity equals view report. So you can search for a view report, create data set, import, uh, download report, a lot of different options there. And you can also say uh, user ID equals someone's user ID just to make sure that you're only getting back a single person's data. You can also use this and operator as well in order to get multiple users or multiple activities. So that's the entire video. I know it was a lot of steps in order to get to that final output, uh, but it is quite intense given that you have to recall that API every time you get a continuation token. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, leave a like. If you also want to take part in our training over at training.bile.com, we have some great courses on Power BI, DAX, and Alteryx currently with more to come out very soon. And I'll see you in the next video.